I'm delighted that Dante's Divine Comedy, A Guide for the Spiritual Journey, is now available as an audio book on Audible. Hoping you will very much enjoy it. Here's Chapter 1, Inferno 1. Dante's Divine Comedy, A Guide for the Spiritual Journey. Written by Mark Vernon, narrated by Mark Vernon. Inferno 1, Lost. Dante, frightened by his plight and terrorised by strange beasts, discovers a guide. Dante's The Divine Comedy begins with famous words. Halfway through the journey of life, he wakes up. He is in a dark wood, having wandered from the path. We have begun. The year is 1300. The day is Good Friday. Dante is 35 years old, at the midpoint of his three score years and ten. He's already a famous poet and politician, he is married, a father, and has been in love. However, fortune has turned against him. Florence is being ruined by a civil war between the groups known as the Guelphs and Gebelines. Dante has found himself on the wrong side with the faction known as the White Guelphs. He is soon to be expelled from his beloved city, on pain of being burnt alive. What is life really about? He is midway through it and finds himself far from the path that he thought was navigable. The dark wood is confusing and bitter, as is his life. Both fill him with fear. Has everything that he stood for been lost? He had thought he was a success and is wondering if he has been simply and thoroughly deluded. The journey beginning is of far greater significance than he could have possibly imagined. It will be an odyssey full of strange encounters in a cosmos that is far odder than it has so far seemed. It will be labyrinthine, in the sense that although full of twists and turns, and often seeming to take him away from the centre, there will prove to be no wrong turnings, no matter how dark and difficult it gets. This journey is willed and held by barely imaginable forces. These realisations are not his at the moment. He wakes to a living nightmare, akin to a lucid dream. There is a forest around him, and it looks strange and uncanny. It is dark and full of twisted roots. The place feels slippery. It renders any direction of travel unclear. Maybe this is the first real step, to wake up to where he actually is, lost. Casting his eyes this way and that, he spots a hill and some sunshine. They give him hope. He knows that with the sun can be found the light of reason and direction and an orientation toward the divine. And if you can see the stars or the sun, then you can never go too far wrong. Maybe this waking up is no more than an everyday depression or difficulty. He tries to ascend the slope, seeking a shortcut from the darkness. But the way is blocked. Standing before him are three powerful beasts, a dancing leopard, a strong lion, and a hungry she-wolf. They taunt and intimidate him in the gloom. Every move Dante makes is met with threat and a snarl. It seems there is no way to escape them. They are too wily, too fast. His hopes for a speedy return to normal life fade as a gnawing panic sets in. Commentators discuss what the creatures stand for, and I think they represent three capacities or skills that Dante thought he had and fears he hasn't. The three character traits of wisdom, of love and of virtue. The dancing leopard, I suspect, is the embodiment of a reduced or even perverted wisdom. He thinks he knows how to respond to whatever life throws at him, though it turns out he doesn't, and he never did. My sense is that the strong, proud lion who strides deliberately toward him represents desire and love. Only with the rising sense that he is way off course, the qualities that might guide him terrify him. He backs off and moves down the slope to be confronted by the lean she-wolf. To my mind, this beast stands for virtue misused. Good traits have become possessive, envious, hungry in him. They have morphed into calculation and vice, and they scare him. To see the beasts off, Dante must understand them, but he is worlds away from such a conception. That said, his panic indicates something to us about the nature of this journey. 
His great poem is populated by the characters and crimes that he has encountered and witnessed during his life, as well as by demons, angels and unexpectedly great-souled saints. But it is simultaneously an inner journey. One of the things Dante will learn is how to navigate his interiority. Moreover, something similar is required of us if we are fully to follow him. The poet's opening remark is midway along the journey of our life. Dante the poet invites us to accompany him as he retells the time he was a pilgrim. We can read about what happens to him, but must also peer more closely to see how he was transformed. The hope is that, following him aright, we will be transformed too. It might be thought of as an initiation, a process by which an inner eye opens and everything in life finds its place because we participate in its vitality in a wholly new way. We change. To do so, we must experience all that exists in the deepest darkness as well as the brightest light. Because it is only when you know about hate that you can really know about love. Only when you know about fear that you can really know about hope. Only when you have confronted the impossible that you wake up to what is possible. The poem is full of tragedy, but it is more completely understood as a comedy, a story that ends well, that comes because all has been faced and seen. There is no shortcut, no backing off. It is an ascent that starts with a descent, and this is the thrill of reading the Divine Comedy. It is not just a travel log or biography. It is far more active than that. It can work on you and extend your consciousness if you take the time to dwell with and reflect on it. Dante has written a guide to life in all its fullness, and he has a guide too. As he is spinning around in the woods, the beasts of his personal failures hunting him down, a human figure appears. It is Virgil, and he is going to become a tremendous, life-changing blessing. Virgil was Dante's great poetic teacher. There's something irreplaceable about the person who prompts undreamt glimpses of what's possible, which extends to and reach over horizons. Virgil is the author of another odyssey, the Aeneid. It features the journey of Aeneas through light and darkness. It includes a trip to the underworld, which is to say that Virgil has been to the land of the dead before. He has undertaken a similar journey, and Dante needs someone like that, someone who can keep faith when hope ebbs, can reach for the practical wisdom that knows the way down is often the way up. Virgil is not alongside Dante by chance, of course. He is here at the request of the great love of Dante's mortal life, the Lady Beatrice. Dante barely spoke to her before she died too young and rarely saw her on the streets of Florence when she was alive, but the sight of her stirred love in him. It was an infatuation at first, though it lit a flame that grew. It became the one reliable feature of his life. It gave him energy and, still reliable, gives him energy again in the dark wood. Youthful, seeming mad, immature love. It might yet save him. Only Virgil's presence prompts a question in Dante's mind. It's another key feature of this undertaking, for with questioning comes awareness. His question is this. Virgil is a pagan. He was born under false and lying gods, Dante presumes, the gods before Christianity. So how can Virgil guide him? Why has Beatrice sent him? It seems a bit harsh, but it is an honest expression. Dante is still naive. He is on the threshold of hell, a zone of crude views that conceal as much as they reveal. He must express what he feels truly to change. He must ask questions. Inner states of mind trap people unless they are brought to the light of day. Assumptions must be understood in all their stark ferocity, which is to say Dante must travel to the domains where confusion rules. The first canto concludes with Virgil offering Dante a summary of what lies ahead. They will go to the desperate before coming to the transforming and continuing to the rejoicing. 
Inferno comes before Purgatorio and Paradiso. Only Dante can't take it in. He's still terrified in this forest, midway through the journey of our life. He has woken in this unpleasant, unwanted reality. All he can do is cling close to his guide. What else, who else has he got? They set off.